spaceship Earth. Rising over the entrance to Epcot Center, it beckons as the gateway to future world, a vast new showcase for the technical innovations of tomorrow, pointing the way to exciting and achievable new directions in future living. Spaceship Earth stands as one of Disney's proudest achievements. But is it a machine, a vehicle, a monument? In some ways, it's all of these and more. But before it was anything at all, it was an idea and a dream. Now, as you will soon see, Spaceship Earth's theme is communications, civilization and communications, from Stone Age to Information Age. And I therefore think it is very fitting that we dedicate Spaceship Earth to all of the people who have advanced communications, arts, and sciences, and in so doing have demonstrated that communications is truly the beginning of understanding. So now I would invite Governor Graham, Mr. and Ms. Walker, the First Family, and all guests to join me on the inaugural ride through Spaceship Earth. Before we go aboard and experience the story inside, let's take a look at the story behind Spaceship Earth. We knew we wanted to have a, an information and communications theme, but that's about where we were when we decided to bring Ray Bradbury in to work with us. And Ray did some very brilliant writing of a, of a very broad concept which became the underpinning for everything we have done uh, in uh, Spaceship Earth. You know, one of the great pleasures I had uh, 18, 19, 20 years ago is going out to Disney Studios and having lunch with Uncle Walt. I was a member of the Mickey Mouse Club when I was 12 in the Fox Theater over in Tucson, Arizona. And to sit with Walt and talk about the future was fantastic. And one day he said to me, you know, the horrible thing about World's Fair is, is what? And I said, the horrible thing is the year after they open, they tear everything down. He said, well, I would like to build a permanent World's Fair, and I hope someday you'll have something to do with it. I said, my God, I can hardly wait to be hired. And finally, three or four years ago, the Epcot people came by and said, remember what Walt said? Well, we're going to build a permanent World's Fair and occasionally tear down the ideas inside the walls. That makes great sense, doesn't it? So the wonderful thing about the Epcot Center to me and Spaceship Earth and everything surrounding it is that you have a permanent World's Fair. You have a chance of influencing generations of children. So what we did was to essentially go back and look at everything that had been uh, recorded historically to depict sort of the rise of civilization uh, from uh, the time of the caveman to today and see if we couldn't track along some pathway that would uh, give us the ability to link events one to the other. And uh, what we chose as the device to do that turned out to be communications. And once we decided that that was going to be the theme that we would use to um, develop the story points for each of our individual scenes in Spaceship Earth, we then went to uh, uh, the Annenberg School of Communications uh, at USC and worked with Fred Williams, who, had, who at that time was the dean of the uh, Annenberg School. The, the process started by uh, drawing a big timeline going back to about, uh, oh, say, Cro-Magnon times, uh, you know, around 40,000 B.C., and in plotting a lot of dates and events, things like uh, the presumed invention of writing uh, by the Sumerians and Egyptian hieroglyphics, and uh, then moving into things like, uh, obviously, medieval years are very exciting, you have the coming of the printing press, and then things speed up an awful lot as you come toward the communications future, and they actually get to be a whirlwind by our times, you know, the whole process is speeded up. So what we did was to draw, at first, a big timeline, uh, did it uh, uh, including with graphics, drew some little pictures here and there because uh, uh, that seems to stimulate the creative process, 
and then a, a, a bunch of us sat around for a couple of days and bunched events together. Kind of took places on the, on the timeline and squished them together and said, well, uh, you know, maybe writing was kind of the basis uh, for civilization. You know, you could put down laws and things like that. And uh, the, the uh, ability to uh, take writing and store records and do scientific calculations and things like that uh, was sort of an, an era of uh, early science and that kind of thing. And then the printing press uh, allowed you to really have the first kind of mass communication where you eventually could send messages out across time and distance. And then, of course, the most exciting part is getting into the modern electronic technologies, which, you know, allow you to beep a message from one point in the world to another point at the speed of light, to have people teleconferencing, computers, all this kind of stuff. So we tried to bunch these events together in terms of the, the things that, that together uh, the items allowed us to do, like what did the invention of writing mean for civilization, and what did the printing press mean, what did the coming of the telegraph and the radio mean, how did life change and all of those things. Now, all that blends into the, how we look at the future. We have a bunch of new things with us now, and how we're going to live in the uh, year 2000 can be highly affected on all these new communication devices. So that's kind of how we do it. I think it, it finally grouped into about 16 or 17 scenes. So, to begin, there was a dream to tell the story of our progress in communication in a new and totally unique way. I think this is the biggest mural that I made for Spaceship Earth in Florida. It's going to be on the wall just in the entrance. To begin, I have to ask, where did men come from? Where are we going? What are we looking for? And I think the answer is power. The power of the universe, the good of the universe. It is the life, the electricity. This is where we come from, and I did, and I think that where we want to go. In this painting, I try to make people understand how man communicates, the meaning of communication, how important and powerful communication is. Turning a dream into reality. Teamwork and cooperation has made it possible. That's also where our story starts, the human story. It's real touching to see elements that you were involved with when they were a, a minor concept and you saw the development stages occur and once you actually get them produced and get them up and get them physically in the building and you walk through, that's, you know, that's remarkable. Another thing, the other night we lit Spaceship Earth, the outer dome, and that was extremely touching for me to see that dome illuminated and I don't think anybody will ever realize all the blood sweat and tears that goes behind what that guest is going to see when they ride through that dark ride they're not going to understand what it took to erect steel and put up drywall and put in control systems and electronic equipment uh, I think they'll get a real good show but the blood sweat and tears behind it is is I think one of the neatest experiences that I've had since I've been on the job. The idea of Spaceship Earth was totally new and unique. To build the world's first complete geodesic sphere, 165 feet in diameter, 18 stories tall, elevating the entire structure 15 feet off the ground, constructing a multi-story ride inside, and enclosing it all in a decorative skin. By making use of the technology of tomorrow, the newest ideas, materials, and techniques industry has to offer, Spaceship Earth embodies the spirit of Epcot Center and serves as the centerpiece of future world. We do want to give uh, our guest a glimpse into what the future might be, and in doing so, showing unique building materials, unique structures, and taking the latest technology that's available and showcasing it uh, for our guests. For example, the outer skin of the sphere is formed by 954 Alucaban panels that were built to our own specifications. No panel shaped like this had ever been made before and a special device had to be invented to hold them and lift them into place. It's the world's largest installation of this material. 
Underneath the panels, the entire sphere is sealed in a thick black rubber membrane for waterproofing. Others have used this material for roofing, but no other structure has ever used this technique to seal the entire building. Our engineering consulting firm won an award for the unique use of welding in the structural support system. We have gone beyond the building code requirements in the interest of safety. By making use of the technology of tomorrow, the newest ideas, materials, and techniques industry has to offer, Spaceship Earth embodies the spirit of Epcot Center and serves as the centerpiece of future world. The purpose of our giant geosphere is to house the show inside, and all of these ideals, imagination, and creativity were needed to bring our show to life. All of our figures um, in Spaceship Earth are pneumatic and hydraulic. We have 63 humans and, and two horses. Um, some are far more animated than others, and that depends upon the, uh, the story that we have to tell. A good staging of figures sometimes require very little animation to tell the story. Others, we need to embellish it more. You'll find in the Greek scene where we have an actor, he's very uh, highly animated. He's acting. His arms are waving. He's talking. He's being very dramatic. Um, Gutenberg is only reading uh, a page out of the Bible, so he doesn't have to have that and um, all of the costuming and everything were very carefully researched so that we will have no criticism. The process of costuming begins by studying the model of a figure and consulting with the art director, sculptor, and writer. Working from the model and an animation list, we take into account any movements of the figure and the guest's point of view. We research the time period to make sure we have an authentic look. Designs are made and then colored illustrations are rendered. After taking measurements of the figure, costume manufacture begins with a muslin garment first. After verifying the fit, we finally can start the cutting and sewing of, of a finished costume. Many of our fabrics are the finest available. Some are specially made for us or hand woven. When the whole process is finished, we have a costume that contributes an authentic and lifelike feel to the figure. And now it's ready to be brought to life. Now that we have a better idea what went into the making of Spaceship Earth, let's go aboard and experience the story inside. To get to the beginning of our story, we have to go back, back 40,000 years into the past, back to the dawn of history. Navigators of spaceship Earth, do we dare to be? Could we ever have enough knowledge to chart our own course wisely? The choice is ours. We already have the tools to destroy Spaceship Earth and ourselves. But we also have the most important tool of survival. Our ability to communicate and share our knowledge. By using that tool wisely through the centuries ahead, we can prosper and create a beautiful future on this, our Spaceship Earth. It's a ride through time from past to present to future. Um, I would say that um, with the Renaissance period as an artist, I pr particularly appreciated that. But I tell you, the music, I love the music too. That may be minute in the thing, but it's very effective. And yet Spaceship Earth talks about how fragile our, our Earth really is and this sets the theme. <laughs> 